And there you have the Christmas story. <laughs> so, you know, when I first saw that video, and, and actually a sev- couple people br- sent it to me, I, or I received it ser- several different uh, ways this week, and I just, I fell in love with it. I've probably watched it a dozen times. But one of the things that occurs to me is uh, Mary and Jovis, Joseph weren't probably much older than those kids. That's scary, Right? But as we join together tonight and we celebrate the birth, the birth of the babe G's, and we connect the babe G's. (laughs) Okay, I need to take a breath. (laughs) My birth is already happening and I'm a little distracted, right? As we come together tonight at Unity of Dallas, but we really consciously connect with people all across the globe, Christian and even non-Christian, to celebrate the birth, this moment in time, the birth of the babe Jesus Christ, the birth of the babe Jesus, born to the virgin, young, innocent, pure, unconditional love, Mary, And Joseph, which represents wisdom, born of Mary and Joseph on this night. This Holy One, this Savior, this Messiah. And in unity, we metaphysically interpret this story and we take it personal because we believe and we know in our heart of hearts that each and every person on the planet has this Christ potential within us. Savior and Messiah simply refer to that Christ made manifest, God made manifest, love made manifest, become visible in the world. And so when Jesus was prophesied, when the Messiah, the Savior, was prophesied and Mary became with child, And the whole story was actually created many, many years, 300 years later, after the birth. But why was the story created? The story was created because the message is so real. So did it happen like we think? Did it happen in some other way? I don't know if it's true or if it's not true, but I know it's true. Okay? I know it's true. And so as we come together tonight, what is it that is wanting to be birthed in you? What is it, the love, the Christ, the potential, the passion, the purpose, the kindness, the compassion, what is it that's wanting to be birthed in you anew? What is it that's wanting to come forth in this celebration of this evening. Yes, we celebrate the birth of the babe. And as we know that they traveled to Bethlehem and the inn was crowded and they said, no room, like those little kids, no room, no room. But the crowded inn symbolizes to us the noise, the thoughts and the feelings of all different kinds of people because all people came from all over, all around for the census in Bethlehem as the story goes. But the crowds is chaos. It's like being at the mall. I didn't go today. Praise God. Now, we did drive by on our way in tonight, a Walmart, just because it's on our our way. There was a line into the main road. They couldn't even get in and out of the parking lot. So God bless you all for being here tonight and not at the mall. But the busy, crazy chaos... That's represented by the crowded inn. And yet then they were given a stable, a stable, a barn, which is really like a cave. So they went away, Mary and Joseph went away from the chaos to that dark and quiet place. It was like a womb-like place. And in that womb-like place, the birth happened. Now we can talk about all of a sudden the babe showed up and isn't that beautiful? And for any of us who've actually birthed babes, we didn't, didn't we think it was going to be like that? No, there's some labor involved, but we don't talk about the labor, but we know that there's some labor involved. And then yet Jesus is born. They named him Jesus. 
Glory to God in the highest. The angels appear to the shepherds at night. Glory to God in the highest. For unto you on this day a child is born. In the city a David, a Messiah, a Savior. Go and see this child. Glory to God in the highest. And peace on earth. Goodwill to men. Glory to God in the highest. For unto you is born this day the Christ, the Messiah, the visible manifestation of love. And unto you this day is born the Christ, the Messiah, the visible manifestation of love. The Christ in you, your hope of glory. And the angel appeared to the wise men. And the wise men came. Took a couple of years. But they came bearing gifts. The wise men represent the spiritual intelligence that we have. They come from the east, which represents our inner realm, the spiritual intelligence. So as the Christ in you is born this day, as love in you is born this day, the angels, messengers of God, appear. The shepherds come. The shepherds who watch over our flock, who watch over us by night, by day. The wise men and wise women, the guardians, the inner wisdom, all show up in celebration of this birth. This birth is Christ, is God made manifest. And what if Christ were simply love? I receive a, a lot of emails from people, and I, and I love them. And I read two different stories this week from people who sent me things. And both of them, which I thought was very interesting, was talking about that the challenge on our planet in 2014, and probably for the last 2014 years or beyond, has been selfishness. Charlie. Roland wrote a story, and he's here tonight, and thank you, Charlie. Uh, and he said in the story that 97% of the time we think of ourselves. That leaves 3% to think of other people and the world. But during Christmas, that changes. It moves from 97 all the way down to 80, which means we move from thinking of others 3% of the time, which is a full 27 minutes a day, by the way, to thinking of people, other people, 20 percent of the time and thereby that is where the Christmas spirit comes from now James sent me another story talking about selfishness and thinking about tying those two together right if we really are moving out of selfishness into thinking of other people and that is the key to all the changes on the planet that we're looking for but that is really the birth of the Christ because if Christ is love and love is God and God is love, and Christ is God and love made manifest, then could that not be the exact same thing? And so I invite you tonight, no matter what your day looked like, no matter what you're standing in, some of us are in that Christ spirit, are in that Christmas spirit. We've got eager anticipation. We've got excitement. We've got a, a twinkle sort of in our beings and an anticipation that's, um, you know what I mean, right? Like that. It's that. It's doing that in our bodies. It's igniting us. Others of us are struggling. For some of us, we're, we're facing death or loved ones have died or we're challenged or we're lonely or we're broke and we have no money to buy gifts. All of that is in this very room. But if every single one of us could come into, right now in this moment, the awe, the wonder, the wonderment, the possibility, the hope, the hope for a better tomorrow, the hope that that Christ be born in us anew. We've been on our Advent journey for the last four weeks. We started with hope, that hope for a better tomorrow, just a little inkling almost, a little glimmer of light almost. But as we stand in hope, we can move into peace and we discover the peace that passes understanding. And when we come into that, we discover love. The love that is God itself, not the emotional, uh, logical, personal love, but a love that is greater. And then we discover joy. The joy that is the infallible, logical, 
personal love, but a love that is greater. And then we discover joy, the joy that is the infallible evidence of the presence of God right here in this moment, no matter what you're experiencing, no matter. And we discover then from that place the ability to bring love and kindness and compassion onto the planet. We create our tomorrows in this moment. We create our tomorrows today. So let us right now in this moment choose to allow the birth of Christ as love in us to take hold, to be born, to manifest, to come onto the planet and to open ourselves to a different way of being. Let us choose Consciously choose from this moment forward to do more than 3% thinking about other people. Let's go to 20. Let's go to 20. And then let's continue. Let's continue that. Let's keep ourselves aware of something other than ourselves. Let's keep ourselves in a place where we choose Christ over anything. No matter what we stand in, if it's anger, it's fear, it's resentment, it's, it's concern, it's grief, love is present. We can choose love in any moment. Love is always present. God is always present. The birth of the Christ is the birth of love in you, anew, in a whole new way. So land in that place in your heart. Land in that place right here and right now. As we go through this service, we have more music. We'll take an offering in a little bit. We have a meditation. We'll have our candle lighting service, our ceremony. But allow yourself right now to open your mind to experiencing it different. Like what if this is the day? That Christ in you is born. What if this is the day where love comes unto you, takes over you, enfolds you, and expands out from you like never, ever before. That, my friends, is the second coming. That, my friends, is the key to a quantum leap in consciousness. That, my friends, is the key to the rearranging and reallocating of all the energies on the planet to be expressive of love, to come from love. When we land there, when we collectively meet that place, we will no longer experience separation or loneliness or lack or limitation or war. We will experience love. And love will overcome all things, all fear, all emotion, all circumstances. Will we still have life? Yeah, we'll still have life. But we'll have love as the greater percentage of our awareness. When we birth the Christ that is born today, all things can change. The problems of humanity will be solved when we come when humans become conscious of the presence of Christ within the heart and remain conscious of that 365 days a year, 24 and 7. Christmas can be a daily experience. Each day, by dedicating ourselves to love to Christ, to the awakening of love on the planet, to the birthing, to the raising, to the encompassing love, within each and every person. It starts right here in this moment tonight for you and you and you and me. It starts right now in this moment tonight. It can be a whole new experience. We sing our carols, we sing our hymns, we light our candles as a way to open our hearts, to move out of our minds and into our experience. Softening our reactive responses and becoming receptive to the divine energies that are available to us always and forever and especially on this night. So put the Christ first. Put God first. Put love first. Choose love. Glory to God in the highest. For unto you this day is born. The Christ in you your hope of glory. Let this be the message of 
Christmas of the holidays. Let this be the message that is spoken every time we say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays as we bring love and light that is birth to Jesus tonight. We let our hearts be moved. We let our minds be transformed. And we celebrate together the Christ in you, your hope of glory. God bless you. Amen. We've heard that God is love and all the rest is commentary. So we set aside now those things that might disturb us or keep us from experiencing the love of God moving in and through us now. So on this holy night, this opportunity that Jesus Christ himself has given us to become aware of our own indwelling Christ at a deep and a meaningful level. I invite you to experience and to bear witness to feel and to know the way that God sees you. The Christ. The perfect light. A divine idea now held in the mind of God, of you and of me, of the person to your right and to your left, the person in front of you or behind you. Perfect light, perfect love on this very holy and sacred night. It is good that we come together to worship together, to be together, to know the truth together. Allow that Christ light to come forward in you now. From the top of your head, at the tips of your toes and your fingertips. Sparkle. Ever so bright. As we turn to that still small voice within us to bless one another. <laughs> 